This is Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a YouTube video about implant dentistry. This topic will be how to make a zirconia molar screw retained implant crown using angulated screw channel technology. During this case, I did a ridge preservation technique, waited five months, then came back and placed the implant. And actually got it in a pretty good spot here, so not too bad. And uh, we took an impression, got that done, and then we're ready to make a crown. Based on the clinical evidence, it was okay to do zirconia hexes in the premolar, as we see here, but it was not indicated in the molar, which made a problem for us because we had very limited solutions. We had gold or titanium. But now, with the new ASC titanium abutment, we're able to get these new interfaces that enable us to do zirconia crowns in the posterior, which is just fantastic. We will be designing these crowns on the Nobel Procera 2G scanner. We prepare the model by removing the soft tissue model to expose the replica because we want to get in there with the uh, locator for scanning. So we put the locator on the replica, snap it down to make sure it's in place, and then we're going to take this to the scanner. We can look at the screen and check things. First we're going to pick a standard abutment for this particular case. So my technician is doing a Nobel BioCare implant. And we're going to pick a regular platform conical connection implant. This will pop this up on the screen. You can see the internal hex and the platform shift and the conical connection. So during this scan, we're going to do four scans. So first, an upper implant locator scan, number two, an upper jaw model scan, number three, a lower model scan, and then last, an occlusal registration. And so this will all be done in four different scans. During our first scan, we're going to choose the shade, which in this case, we're going to pick the intent. So we have four choices right now. And then uh, we're also going to pick either angulated or straight. So we're going to pick angulated in this case. So you can see in the window, it, it actually makes it so we can angle it up to 25 degrees. We go back and we pick some other teeth in the area because we want to make sure that we're going to have a bite. And then we go back into the scanner with the model and it starts to do the scanning. So this is a conoscopic holography type of optical scanner that goes over top measuring very exactly where the locator is which orients later on to tell us where the replica is. So this is a very very efficient way of scanning a model and having it done very accurately. After a few minutes, the scan is done and the model comes back out and turns and kind of presents to us. Uh, it's kind of cool how it turns here. And so we're able to then now add the soft tissue model back on, take the locator off, give it a little bit of powder so it'll be easier for the optical scanner to see it, and then we'll place it, place it back on the smart model tray. We're going to then use the software to choose where we want to scan in the preview window. And then this will also enable us to kind of start the scan by picking sprayed. So then again, it goes back in for scan number two. In this scan, it's actually looking for where the teeth are, where the soft tissue is, what the shape of the soft tissue is. And as we get into more shaped molar healing abutments, you're going to be becoming more and more important to have this type of technology. So now that scan is completed. And this is the really cool part. Look at this model comes out putting them together both the replica and the soft tissue and the teeth which enables us to know exactly how we're going to want to design our abutment. During our third scan we're going to scan the lower model which is the opposite model or the antagonist. So we tell the computer where we want to scan go in and pick gypsum and then we push the scan button. So it goes back in again and does the same exact thing and finds where the particular occlusal contacts are, tips it, scans it, and gets all the information that's needed. So it's going to generate a, a model that the computer is going to see and be able to be in 3D. Now our last scan is going to be the bite. So we're going to do an occlusal registration. 
So we're going to take the two models, put them together with an elastic band, making sure that they're less than 70 millimeters high, otherwise it won't go underneath the scanner. If we go to the software, look in the preview window, and we kind of outline where we want the scan to occur. And then push the scan button. Here we go. So the scan starts and it's going back and forth into scanning the lateral view, which will enable the computer to put the four scans together. Once these scans go together with the computing software, then we're able to start to make the abutment. So you can see here, it's a general abutment size, and so we can start to shape this. So we're going to orient the model first by taking it and making sure that the computer knows where the distal is, where the mesial, buccal, lingual. And then we're going to start our abutment manufacture. So we're going to do the CAD portion. So we take the channel, and now we're able to point this right at the cusp we want it to. So the lingual cusp of the upper molar, which is the functional cusp, we want this channel to go right at that cusp. That would be the ideal position for the cusp and for the channel to meet. We want to control the emergence profile of this particular abutment, especially since the original kind of design of the soft tissue was a 5x5 five five round healing abutment. So now we want to create some emergence on this to keep food out and also to make it so that the porcelain is supported in the proper directions and proper areas. So we're going to push the soft tissues a little bit in this particular case. In many cases in the molars we do this. This is why in the future you're going to see customized molar healing abutments. So you can see here, we can push the tissue somewhat, and it's up to you to determine how much you want to push this tissue. And uh, being a screw retaining crown, it makes it a lot easier to insert because if we cement these type of crowns, it makes a problem pushing it down. So once we get everything designed below the gum, now we can start to work above the gum line. So we start to make, in this particular case, Mike likes to create a crown. Now they give a, in the computer software, they make the crown nice and high. But what he likes to do is increase the number of handles and then go up and he's going to pull this down. So it's a real quick way to make a really nice abutment. Now his goal is to make this abutment so that he's able to put porcelain on the outside. So it's going to be a porcelain fused to zirconia abutment and it's going to be screw retained. So you can see here he's got the design handles. He's going to turn on the distance to the antagonist. So you can see in red and yellow, it tells him how far visually he is from the antagonist, which is important information for him as he designs the space that's needed to make the porcelain thick enough for when he's fabricating his final crown. So you can see it's a really great system to use. Now Mike Ritter, who's doing this case, likes to have 0.75 uh, on his margins for the porcelain in the molar, so he can have enough design. Here you can see the minimum kind of channel in red, which is the zirconia. You have to have that much zirconia minimum. And all the rest is this kind of extra, which is great. If we take it and cut it in half and look at a cross-sectional design, you can see the titanium kind of abutment that fits between the zirconia abutment and the implant itself. So this is the new system which enables us to be doing this type of work on the molar, which is fantastic. Once you click the finish button and order it, it's going to go to Nobel BioCare and be mailed on one of their big CNC machines. Then they're going to send it back so that the technician can add the porcelain to the abutment, making it into a beautiful screw retained crown. Your goal then is to put this in the mouth. You're going to use an OmniGrip screw to kind of secure this in. This screw is a blue tipped screw and you can see that it uses an OmniGrip screwdriver to put it in. So you can snap these two together like so and carry it to the mouth and it makes a great system to use. You're also going to make sure that the abutment stays on the bottom of the zirconia as you take it to the mouth. But this is the beauty of the system. It fits down into the hex and provides a very strong and stable connection, which is what we want when we have this final crown seated looking as beautiful as it does. It's just fantastic. The patient actually loved it. He thought it was fantastic as well. You can look inside here and see the blue screw, making sure that you use the proper driver. So here's some of the advantages to do it, but I'd like to thank Mike, my dental technician, Mike Ritter. He did a fabulous job on this particular crown. Thanks, Mike.